Uh, I work for a Swedish NGO called MKG, uh, the Swedish Miljöorganisationen uh, Kärnfallsgranskning, and we work with with the uh, uh, nuclear waste issues in Sweden. Uh, we uh, are funded by uh, we have been funded traditionally by, by the nuclear waste fund money. Uh, at the moment, we are funded by directly funding from the government because they are reorganizing uh, the legislation is being uh, reviewed at the moment. Um, uh, but I also work have done a lot of work within nuclear transparency and watch. And one of the things we have done within nuclear transparency is watch is something called the Be the Bepper project. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea behind the BEPA project is, of course, that transparency within the nuclear field and within nuclear waste management is good for for society. Um, transparency allows the engagement of civil society, and uh, the idea that it improves the quality of decisions that are taken if you have more people involved is, is I think, central to, to this uh, issue. Uh, and this will lead, hopefully, to higher safety, better safety of implementary systems. Uh, also, generally, if public participation is early in the process, you have a better chance of, of implementing projects. And um, the input from the civil society in the consultation processes has to be taken due account of, seriously due account of. Um, and I would say that the more influence possible by the civil society in the decision making, uh, not only through the normal democratic processes, but also through uh, uh, the possibility of, uh, let's say, environmentally NGOs or, or local communities to actually have part in the decision making uh, uh, allows uh, a better progress towards implementation of projects. Uh, we have also seen in Sweden, I think, very much that the availability of enduring resources to uh, local communities and to NGOs um, has become fruitful in the sense that it, it allows a, a broader and better discussion of, of the issues. Uh, even though it, it might complicate things to a certain extent because more issues may be put on the agenda and have to be dealt with, uh, it is still, I think, in the, in the long run, uh, a, a good way to, 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 to do things. Uh, when we were starting with this project, the Beppe project within NTW, uh, we, many of us were already heavily involved in, in different sort of, of processes uh, and the Oris Convention has been very important for, for civil society, for environmental NGOs in order to reach access to information, to public participation uh, and access to justice. Uh, the, the access to justice is perhaps not as well implemented uh, in member states because all member states are, are parts to the convention. and. Uh, uh, of course, then the European Union is also a part of the Convention, except for Evratom. Uh, and uh, this is sort of a problem, and I think this is also something that NTW uh, would like to be part of a process of changing. We would like to see the, 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 co the, the Commission, the, the Euratom part of the Commission, uh, really engaged and, and if, to start with, to live up with the same, to the same uh, principles as the Oris Convention, but perhaps in the long term it will be possible for, for, for to join the convention. Uh, we, I don't want to talk very much about the radioactive waste management, radioactive wa ra waste uh, directive, but Article 10 of the directive is on transparency, and it includes access to information and access to, to public participation. Access to justice is, is not in here, but I mean access to justice is a problematic thing for the whole commission to, to, to to deal, to deal with. Uh, uh, but uh, it does say uh, that this, even though the, the, the Euratom Treaty, the, this Euratom Treaty is not part of the Oris Convention and the directive does not refer to the Euratom, to the, to the Oris Convention, um, 
uh, in, in both cases regarding information and the, and the public participation, it says in accordance with national legislation and international obligations, which basically you can interpret as be meaning that this has to be done in accordance with the Oris Convention. So, um, we started with NNTLW uh, a project in 2014, um, and uh, uh, the acronym BEPR, if anybody wants to know what it means, it's, it's a broad framework for effective public participation and part, uh, information part, and participation in environmental decision making in radiative waste management. Uh, actually, uh, BEPR is also part, if you look at the, 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 the uh, um, uh, um, no, okay, I'll leave that one. Um, we, we, we worked through 2015 um, and we were able actually to, to secure a tender from the Commission to, to provide information on this issue and, and on what the Commission could think about, you know, we need to evaluation on, on the, of, the, of the Article 10 when it was doing the review of the, of the national reports and, and the programs. Um, so we were working through, and, and the report is available on, on the NTW website. Uh, and uh, we had a team uh, working. I, I led this team, Phil Kearney from Ireland, Nadja from Zeletnich from uh, uh, Slovenia, Vanessa Liston from Ireland also, Jill, Herriard uh, de Breuil from Mutadis in, in, in France, Jan Haferkamp, uh, who you all, many of you know, but he was working in, as part of NTW for this, as was Patricia Lawrence uh, also around the table here. Uh, we also were able to create a network of environmental NGOs, and we had 29 NGOs from 16 countries. I think basically we have, have contact with all environmental NGOs who, who in any way deal with nuclear issues. Uh, in this network. It was very good to be able to create this network also for the work of NTW uh, that we have this contact in, into, into, the Europe, into Europe and also Ukraine, uh, for example. And of course then we have the NTW office with, with Maria Lix Verhofen who was very, very supportive during the work. Uh, now the, the report uh, includes uh, First, some general discussions on transparency in radioactive waste management. It then goes through the directive and it looks at the Aarhus Convention. And uh, the Aarhus Convention, of course, includes these, the, the three pillars of the Aarhus Convention, the, the access to information, the access to public participation, and the access to justice. And we, we, we use that as a basis to define what we call the NTW Bepper pillars for effective transparency. And they are as follows, uh, effective access to information and communication. So it also includes how do you actually inform in, in an effective way. Effective access to public participation and consultation. Some of the consultation processes we discussed, which are good ways of, of, of having consultations. Uh, effective access to justice and decision making. And also this question of effective access to resources. The resourcing of the civil society to be able to participate is very important. Uh, these are very difficult issues. They are very broad and, uh, uh, issues. And uh, unless civil society has the possibility to engage in the long term, it, it's going to be only very few people who, who will actually be able to, have to, to do this. Uh, so the, the possibility to resource, like in, like in Sweden, the NGOs work on, on this. Uh, could be very fruitful, and we think it should be should be done generally in in Europe. Uh, we had a chapter on 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 more what we call innovative tra innovative transparency processes, the question of, of how to do good consultation and deliberation. Uh, then we developed uh, what we call the the key components and a level system. Uh, I will come back to these two. Uh, we also have, it's, if you look at the appendix of this report, it is quite a good comprehensive uh, um, going through the relevant research and experience, also 
the governance systems that exist in this, like the Oris Convention and, and different, you know, the ESPA Convention and so on, they are quite well covered. It's kind of, can, can, kind of, you know, a resource, a resource for anybody who wants to know what is being, uh, what has been done within the field also. Uh, so the BEPR key components, uh, we, we, uh, I'm not going to go through these, but we were in big discussions about what are important issues when it comes to transparency, uh, what principles, what good practices are, how resources could be could be found, and how in some innovation in the in the way of how to deal with transparency. Uh, I think it, it's well worthwhile looking into if, if for anybody who's interested. What we finally did was to. Um, do a, a, a process to try to see if we could make a tool for analyzing transparency according to these four pillars. So we tried by looking at what is happening in, in, in Europe and in the world in the different countries, how they're working with different with information to the, to the public, with, with uh, uh, consultation processes and so on, and resourcing. Um, uh, we have made a system where you can actually grade uh, on each of these four issues uh, so it would be possible to make a comparative analysis for example of transparency from within different countries so this was a tool that we thought might be useful for example for the commission in in their work we have we have no idea how they have processed with with this because they they did get our this is a the NTW report but there was also a report uh, presented to the Commission as part of the tender that we that we were working with for for them um, so moving forward uh, nuclear transparency watch um, we we are working for the transparency of of the commission uh, and of the member states when they now continually will uh, work every three years to to make a new national report, we, we, we suppose that most of the member states would also actually every three years, even though they only have to do it every ten years, that they will actually review the national program and make a, perhaps a new version of, of, a, of the national programs. And we want that process to be as, as transparent and open as possible within the member states and also how the Commission then deals with questions and answers and opinions. Uh, with the member states, we want to try to see if we can open up that process also. Um, so, uh, for example, we did, uh, Jan mentioned that we were missing one, the, the Belgian national program. We were able, by, by a request for, for information, to get the uh, reports and programs, uh, and they are published on the NTW website. I, I, so I didn't have, to have time to answer. I thought the Commission said it was on the Commission website. But I don't think it is actually. Uh, we have seen the, the national the, the reports from the first safety um, uh, safety directive reports are on their website. But we don't. We don't I don't think yet uh, that the national reports are on their website. But so so we will continue this work, and we will also consider moving forward now if we can use those better levels for comparative, so we can start to maybe compare. And, and find which member states are more advanced or less advanced with regarding uh, transparency. So this is my presentation. Thank you.